uh, Ring Krause, and I head uh, most of the casting activities for Find Away Voices. So it's kind of twofold. So when a so on the narrator side, when a narrator signs up with us. Um, what myself and my team does is we ask them a whole list of questions. We ask for samples. We get kind of like a bio from them and all of that. And so the first kind of stage is we will review all of that, sort of take their responses on how they think that their voice sounds, what their preferences are in content, what some of the things they've done in the past are. And then we'll take um, a listen ourselves to some of their previous work, the samples they set through, and we sort of um, create a basically a casting database, to, so to speak, um, where we categorize them and sort of make it easier to link them up with the best projects. Um, and then when a rights holder comes through, we will ask them a bunch of questions about their title. We ask them, you know, what kind of the tone is, the genre, um, do they have a preference on the narrator in terms of age or, um, you know, accent type languages they need to speak. And then, so those two things sort of collide and my team and myself, we will then go through and try and connect the best narrators based on this information we kind of collated previously and then connect them with what we think is the best, you know, sort of fit with the title. And then we'll put those forward to a rights holder, let them have a listen to these general samples, see if they like them. And then they can either kind of request auditions from that point or they can ask for some, you know, if we weren't quite right on the money for what they were expecting, they can request an updated casting list. There's definitely um, an art to it. Uh, there's basically, you know, from movies and stuff and popular media, we kind of create an idea of what a voice sounds like. So in your head, you know, you see all of these I don't know, young adult fiction, for example, you see, I don't know, Heath Ledger in 10 Things I Hate About You. And so you develop that as the idea of what a teenage voice sounds like. So sometimes when a rights holder will come through asking for, you know, I want a voice under, the, you know, between 10 to 18, it's very hard to kind of identify what they're expecting versus kind of the reality of what that voice range sounds like from a narrator. So it is a lot of going then into the book trying to have a suss around to see what the other characters are like, what the overall tone is, and then we'll kind of meet a little bit in the middle and try and reconcile the expectations of what they might be thinking in their head and what also might be a good fit for the <music> Periodically they will. A little bit is kind of the uh, expectation of Christian Bale. You know, it's kind of hard to be like, well, you know, reset the expectations, but they will occasionally come through and it helps really reset those kind of, okay, so you want this sort of style and we will go through. Um, but sometimes they will come through with, I like Christian Bale and Morgan Freeman. And it's like, oh, okay, let's try and find a happy medium there. But yeah, I, I know that would be the, maybe the perfect voice, I'm not sure. <laughs> They had sort of really, some of the most fun castings are when they're really open and um, they let us sort of take a little bit of that control. So they came through with some very like open guidelines in terms of the what they were looking for, you know, um, female voice, a mid-tone, um, very, you know, non-fiction oriented, because I believe both of them were non-fiction, um, very bright sort of style. So that really helped us gave us a lot of freedom to play around with some of the names we're working with. We've got a lot of very talented nonfiction narrators. Um, so it kind of let us dig into their books a little bit more to kind of have a read and see if we could match up um, not only tonal, you know, narrators with the right tone, but also that had experience in those genres and could really connect with the content. lot we give them um, a lot of guidance in terms of we'll provide pre-production notes that will kind of takes it on because we don't want to step in particularly with the platform because it's really about the author's experience with the narrator 
So it's very open in that way. Um, I don't personally have a lot of um, input at that stage, but our fulfillment team, a lot of people work with Larissa and Sawyer, two of some of our uh, people that work closely with authors at that stage. And they'll give guidance on how to answer those questions, but really it's the rights holders time to take a look at their content and try and articulate that into a way that a narrator can then roll with it. Um, additionally, that's a really time, like the narrator is, you know, they're pros. So they also, this is their time to also sort of take what the rights holder has provided them and also give their feedback on how they might take some of those things. So we kind of like to, at that stage, kind of let them go and just take a step back a little bit. understanding that things are going to change because when you are writing a book it doesn't always translate 100% into audio the way you expect um, and so I think having that the, the knowledge that you're going to be collaborating on this instead of you know you know one side sort of controlling it the other it's really like a collaboration where you need to just go in knowing that some things might change um, but also to know that this is, you're essentially working together, so your feedback is valid, and even though um, a narrator might be a pro, ultimately they're trying to bring your title to life, so they wanna make you happy in that way too. So it's really kind of both sides trusting the vision of the other artist to make that really like perfect piece. happens a lot and it always ends really well because you know that's what our team is there for too to try and sort of help mitigate those sort of conversations but ultimately the authors you know they they are the one that created that direction so if they want to take the lead and guide the direction of the piece that's actually that works out really well too because that creates a lot of you know structure within which a narrator can work. And that's kind of why we're here, right? So <laughs> our team definitely steps in. If there are, because, you know, a lot of times there are questions, there can be, you know, different content new to the genre or just new to audio. Um, that's our role is to really kind of step in and reset expectations on all sides. And, you know, if there are issues, that's what we're there for is to take that on and resolve it to the best of our ability so that everyone is happy. Um, so my top advice for authors that are on the fence would be um, in terms of not only jumping into audio, but also usually utilizing a narrator. Um, my top advice first off to get into audio is that ultimately you're, you're diversifying the consumption medium, right? So you have print media, you have ebook and audio. Um, I mean, we all drive or most of us drive and that time you're in a car you is I mean personally that's when I'm listening to my audiobooks and that's an hour two hours a day where people are have downtime where they can just consume where they might not be able to otherwise so you could possibly have people reading your ebook and listening to audiobooks at the same time really I think it's just it's one of the fastest growing publishing you know aspects of publishing and so it's kind of like leaving money on the table to not get in. Also, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's it's literally hearing your characters being brought to life. Like, why why would you leave that on the table? I, I love reading kind of the overview of these books. And then when I'm hearing the narrators bring them to life, I can't imagine what it's like to be an author and then hearing an actual character. I mean, I just, I, just, I think that's probably kind of a cool thing. Um, but also using a narrator. Um, I mean, there's benefits on both sides to self-narrating. Obviously, as a rights holder, you probably know your characters inside and out. You know the universe. Um, but narrators are professionals that, you know, have gotten in and this is almost all of them. This is 90% of what they do or all of what they do is just acting and narrating and really honing their craft. They are true professionals. And 
So there's definitely a benefit on both sides of, you know, you definitely know your content. So if you're, if you want to self narrate, that is totally legitimate and that can turn out really, really well. At the same time, sometimes having a third party come in and adding some reinterpretation to a character or a text that you might not have thought of, or just adding that level of professional skill could be really beneficial. Um, so one of, there are a couple of really big options that, or reasons that I say that people might want to come to Find Away Voices in particular. Some of it is, you know, we do look into all of the answers that you respond to with the casting questions. We review your content and we do create a really curated list of narrators. Generally, it's anywhere between six to 12, um, depending on, you know, the title. And I think that's a lot more, um, consumable necessarily because you don't you're not going through a huge heavy list and you're not only given like one or two options you're given enough that you can internalize it and really know that you're making the right choice we offer a lot of guidance we offer a lot of support if you you know if you have questions and you're not sure you can always ask for more options or you can contact our team and we can assist you and give you advice on how to look into it um, also, our team is there to support you through the process. Um, you are, you know, through the auditions and throughout the assignment and production, our team is there to make sure things are running smoothly. If there are any issues, we've got the back of both the rights holder and the narrator, and we are literally there to make it as smooth and easy as possible to produce an audiobook. Yeah, I love um, how the setup works with draft to digital and find away voices. Um, the it's such an easy. I've heard so much feedback from authors saying how easy it is to take a book from draft to digital and move it over to find away voices. I think our cultures mesh really, really well. So when authors move from draft to digital and work with us, I think that's a really nice cohesive experience. And I think it's just we're, we all have the goal of getting as much content out as possible and enabling independent authors to publish and get their you know words or voices out into the world. <laughs>